welcome to join the 10 South South Forum on Sustainability. Apart from the Zoom webinar, we are also live streaming in Putonghua for a Chinese audience. For friends on Zoom, please click the group icon and select your preferred language. I thank today's interpreters, Solomon uh, Bostani and Mercedes Pico for interpreting in English and Spanish, uh, Matt Matlock and uh, Justin Moreno for interpreting in English and Portuguese, and Huang Xiaomei and Pei Haitong for interpreting in English and Putonghua. My name is Sichui Jadi Margaret. I'm Associate Professor at the Institute for Rural Revitalization Strategy at Southwest University, China. I am also a founding member of the Global University for Sustainability. I have been actively involved in the rural reconstruction movement in China since 2000 year. Working together with Professor Lao Qin Chi, I am coordinating the programs of the South South Forums. Today we have the webinar, on solidarity economy and community currencies. May I introduce the moderator, uh, Claudia Yadira is an economist from the National Polytechnic Institute and a socialist at the National Autonomous University of Mexico. She is a promoter of alternative economies based on community organization for more than 15 years. She is a member of Red Tuck Law the first community currency in Mexico. And she is co-founder of the Muturuka uh, Michuca Exchange Community in Mexico City. She has participated in various international meetings, such as the People's Summit in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and the International Conference of Social and Complementary Currency in Spain, uh, Brazil, and Japan. She is an active participant in the World Social Forum. She has written books on community currencies. Now I pass the floor to Claudia. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jadi, my dear friend. Thank you also to the Global University for Sustainability. Thank you also, Kim Chi, of course, for the co-organization of this session. It is to me a great pleasure to be able to work with the Global University linked to the University of Good Living as well. We are co-organizing with them as well. And it is a pleasure to be able to have today this panel made up of these wise and powerful expert women, loving, dear women who have devoted their lives to the solidarity economy and to community currencies. Today, we will have a session that is very, very beautiful. I just wanted to share just to start the session, I wanted to share two things that I thought were very important to share with you. The first one, I, I wanted to say that this session, we are carrying it out within the framework of the 10th South, South Forum, of course, but also with a relationship uh, with the global university, with Kim Chi and with Jade, uh, a long-term relationship. It goes back many years. And I would like to remind you that in Mexico, we have been working on this topic of, of community currencies for 30 years now. It has been 30 years this year. I, of course, uh, got on board a bit later, but last year, a comrade of ours passed, the one who first generated the first community currency. And we created a network of community currencies and people who are working on this topic. And it is a pleasure to me to have Eloisa Primavera with us today because Eloisa has been a crucial part along our path, a crucial part of community currencies in Mexico. But she is really not only an expert, she is also the necessary reference in what has to do with social currencies in Latin America and many different parts of the world. Apart also from being a dear friend who has accompanied us on this process for a long time. Eloisa Primavera was born in Brazil and she is an Argentine adopted uh, ad adoptee. She is a biologist and a neurophysicist, and she is very much committed to the promotion of exchange systems in Latin America. She's also co-founder of the LASIS Network, which is the Latin American network of solidary socioeconomy. She has been a co-founder from 1999. 
currently she promotes the collective, the Abya Yala Collective uh, for eco transformative economies. It is a great pleasure to have Eloisa with us here today. And without further ado, I give her the floor because she has many things to comment on, many things to talk about, and we always learn so much from her. From her. Thank you very much, Eloisa. You have the floor. It is my pleasure, Claudia, to be here. You know that it is always a pleasure to meet again in any space. We saw Nelsa in Marika when I had COVID last November. Do you remember Nelsa when we met last November? And I always see these familiar faces from the Hispanic, Latin American and European world, but not so much from the Asian world. This is why it is a super pleasure to, re to see Professor Lao Kim Chi again. Professor Luis Lopezera called her Lao Kim Chi and she recommended her to come see us in Argentina many years ago. I think it's over two decades ago, right? Right, Lao? It's two decades ago. So I wanted just to give you this message. Uh, of course, after, of course, I'm going to leave you my presentation. We can uh, disseminate it online or via our social media. But the pleasure here to me is that the fate has crossed our three different initiatives together. Um, banks, social medias, like the type of uh, the currency that Nelsa is going to talk about, uh, which is a fair currency. I can't remember, I think it's called fair in a feminine, in a, in a, with a feminine, you know, we have a gender in nouns in Spanish. So justa is for the feminine fairness. I'm going to share my screen now. And it, sometimes it's difficult for me to believe that what I want to appear will actually appear. So here it is, here's my presentation. Why did I do my presentation in English? Well, because I'm going to speak in Spanish and I feel that it's a bit easier for you to follow on my presentation in English. And Claudia, please tell me when my time is up. I don't know. Uh, please let me know. But I called this presentation. Uh, this is the title that I gave my presentation. Because when I was thinking about the crisis and the opportunity, thinking about social currencies and the pandemic, the pandemic was what um, joined our currencies together. I really don't know. I don't know really which is the crisis and which is the opportunity. If the crisis, which was the crisis and which was the pandemic? And this is what I wanted to start with. Social currencies, pandemic, crisis and opportunities, which is which? That's my idea. We'll see. Why? There's something that I think is very important. I, today we are amidst a crisis that is unprecedented for our generation, which is our climate crisis. It started here where I live. I live in Uruguay and Montevideo. Montevideo has water just for a week. We are getting water from the river now. So it's not that the climate crisis is something that is upcoming in the future. We are amidst the crisis. And the pandemic was just a distractor. That is how I see things. But what we share, what brings us together, women and men that are here today, is that we all face, we all see when we go to bed at night, we think about how we can we can make the future brighter, not a uh, horrible, uh, um, not this the place for sad and and sad and difficult childhoods, but rather the future that we all dream about, which is this one. It is a future that is in harmony with nature, and where the image can be represented by happy children. So this image, this image that comes from the pandemic. It is an image of five children in Brazil. This was taken during the pandemic and it inspires me because it talks about austerity and it talks about good living. 
good living as a responsibility of our own, good living that we refer to and that Claudia also mentioned is something that has to do with being austere, with being more simple, with knowing how to redistribute the wealth of the earth. The wealth of the earth is abundant. It is not scarce. We let it be scarce, but it is not scarce. So continuing with this, what I say, what we commit to, those of us who are in this table, and of course, much more beyond this table, because there are many of us, we work for this world, a world that is in harmony with nature, that can be represented by happy children. Let's go back to here. Uh, let's mention some historical milestones in Latin America so that uh, comrades, mostly from the Asian world, understand why it is important to understand the context in which these uh, complementary currencies called social or solidary currencies emerge. Of course, they didn't develop on the street from one day to the other. There was a very strong movement of popular economies, very diverse ones, with more presence of the church or less presence of the church in the 70s and 80s, because Latin America was amidst the military dictatorships. And it is important to mention this because our network created in Argentina in 1999, it was never called Currency Network. It was called Latin American Network of Socioeconomic Solidarity. This shows the path that shows, we never thought about a network of currencies. No, because even if they are complementary, if they are isolated, their fate, their destiny is short lived, is short, uh, it doesn't have a, a, a long scope or a long time frame. So what it is very important for us to mention is that at the end of the 80s, there were initiatives, and I will show you some images in Canada, in the US, very interestingly, they were born, these initiatives in the North, the first complementary currencies that uh, attempted to achieve a certain scale. Um, and it is in the year 1995 that they formally appear in Argentina and Mexico, but also Peru and Ecuador that are not necessarily mentioned usually. In 1995, there were some very isolated initiatives in this sense. But what happened is that between Argentina and Mexico, before internet, before all the facility, the, the easy communications that we have today, there was contact already. Uh, I lived in Mexico in the 80s and I met Luis Lopez Gera at that time. He was um, working, supporting an organization, the promotion of popular development. He worked until his last days. And at that time, I was working with an organization that had a different name, but it was thinking about uh, these initiatives in the Latin American framework. What does this mean? This makes sense in each of our countries if we think about our uh, Abiyayala, the land that flourishes. It's the Abiyayala is. We prefer to call it Abiyayala than Latin America because Latin America is more a political frontier and Abiyayala refers to the continent in a different sense. So it is important to remember here that when we speak about social currencies or community currencies, we can also think about our um, think about this as a milestone in our commitment for this successful initiative. Why was it successful? Because it very easily reached a lot of people. We went to the fair and we take things, not money, and we leave the fair with other things and without exchanging money. This was the Argentine model called the Barter Club. It wasn't a club because it was open and it wasn't exclusively barter because it wasn't in between two people, but between many people. This model did not have any type of backup in the official currency because they were distracted. In the governments, they were concerned with uh, obeying the rules of the IMF and they were concerned with structural adjustment. And so these movements that were small movements 
small movements, more like neighborhood level movements, why would they be concerned about them? So I think it's very important to remember that we had these currencies that were not backed up by the official currency, non-backed complementary currencies, these little pieces of paper with nothing backing them except trust between people. Why? Because the governments and the banks were concerned with other things. So continuing with this topic, I wanted to remind you that in the province of Buenos Aires in the year 2001, we had fairs of 10,000 people each Sunday. And there was a, 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 there was an, a poll company who calculated that 6 million people had been participating and practicing with these complementary currencies. This is also my comrade who left us 10 years ago, and he worked tirelessly. And I was a bit younger in that photo, I was in, in the year 90-something. This is a currency from Canada. These are pounds. And it says, I promise to pay what I can afford. It's a very simple image of a currency. These are the famous currencies, Ithaca in the north of the United States in the city of Ithaca, precisely. It says that it replaces God. And it says, in Ithaca, we trust instead of God. We trust, uh, trust community. This one continues to exist. It's very small, but it still exists. And this is one of ours from our barter club from the Buenos Aires city area. And I put these images just because I wanted to show you that we had thousands of different currencies. I have 3,000 different um, notes showing this very powerful movement. And now we're going to see what happened. This means... that in this development, there were two different models. One model that was the Argentine model that continued to be used and it reached up to 6 million people in the year 2001. Then of course we had the political, economic and financial crisis and everything fell through. There were still 50,000 people who remained and that's a lot of people, but they were much more isolated after that, not in networks anymore. And this is important for our comrades in Asia to know, this corresponded to 30% of our economically active population in Argentina and 17% of their total population. It's important to take this into account because to speak about 6 million, of course, for our comrades in China might seem like something very small, like something very minor. But it, to us, it was a lot of people because it was 17% of the total population of the country. And the uh, proof that this was a very important movement, that it was not it no longer, it was no longer ridiculous nor dangerous. The proof of this was that the National Congress had five projects for laws to control this monetary expansion, um, or this so-called monetary expansion. On the other hand, Brazil, which is my country of origin, uh, which is my country of origin, as Claudia highlighted, and I, sometimes I forget, except when I speak Portuguese, which is when I remember, the bank, the Banco Palmas, that year was an experience that was quite particular, because there was a, a primitive Banco Palmas, but it didn't have a currency. And we suggested when when we worked with the Stroham Foundation in Holland, we we had the project of creating the first community, the community currency. In the year that Lula, President Lula, uh, did his first uh, uh, first term as president, began his first term. In those twenty years. That small experience, very small experience of a paper currency grew until it transformed in 150 banks, some of them more successful than the others. But today we can say that there are 150 banks in a country that is very large and that would need about 10,000, but we are on the way. 
But the point that I want to um, stress is that since 2016, the Mumbuka currency from the city of Marica in Rio de Janeiro state uh, launched a, pro a program of a basic citizen income. I would like to call your attention to this, particularly to our comrades in Asia, because this is an, a very unknown and, and very new initiative all over the world. If, if you can stop the noise uh, that I have in my house, please. What I wanted to say is this, that the Palmas Bank function with a different model from the Argentine model. This is very important because Nelsa is going to speak about this later. It has an application of its own, which is called Edineiro, and it is backed up by official currency, by the Brazilian currency. Why? Because it was the way that the Palmas Bank um, was able to multiply its experience. So, there are two different, um, two different like branches. What is the main difference? The mutual credit currencies like the Michuca and the ones that I'm talking about now in Latin America do not have state control or bank control. They are exclusively community initiatives. Currently, Argentina has a currency that is a cryptocurrency. It is called it, it works in blockchain technology and mutual credit. So it is not backed by the official currency. In 2020, we had a crisis of the currency, which enabled the opportunity of the pandemic. Uh, uh, it enabled the possibility and expand to four countries. Ecuador, where the Muyu, uh, Muyu currency was created. And the fourth one is the initiative in Chile, which we don't have time to talk about here today. But for the comrades who are going to speak later, this is the beginning. This marks the beginning of a movement that started to look to uh, create new relationships with the banks and the transition. Why are these statistics so important? Well, we don't have, because we don't have too much time. It's not that we're waiting for a crisis, we are amidst a crisis. And the question we are asking ourselves is how much time do we have in order to test and to do things uh, that are up to the challenge with a poverty uh, and uh, that we have right now. So what? how much time do we have to feel when we're going to bed that we're going towards one kind of world or not the other one? And I think that the essence of my presentation in, in this case could be summarized by this image or this slide, which is, it depends on how us in our organizations and projects or groups, we can combine these three attitudes um, between activism, which is changing our world in our daily life and research because without research and without this dialogue of South-South that we are actually doing, we couldn't um, shorten the distances. And the third element that I called in English uh, on purpose, entrepreneurship, which is an attitude, which is to, to take um, responsibility and to multiply what we are doing, to grow creatively and uh, taking paths that have been already um, <clears throat> taken by other people. Okay, I'm going a little bit faster, but just to arrive, you have two or three minutes left, uh, Eloisa, please. Okay, okay, thank you. 
Okay, now it's going to be more like a movie, okay? But you know you have the presentation later on if you want to see it. It depends on us today to combine activism, militancy, um, and to have the openness for that uh, to use the information of other movements that exist. There are so many books um, that uh, are available and our ability to multiply uh, all the information. So we have this book that is in Spanish um, that whoever wants it can ask for it. And our experience of the four currencies that were launched in 2020, despite the pandemic, it was not despite the pandemic, it was because and for the pandemic. And then from there, we have some lessons learned and our four main lessons that is self-management is crucial for us it means um, participative democ democracy the other one is that um, the it has to be permanent the permanent markets now we have uh, five or ten different models in Uruguay, Colombia, Ecuador, it's not, it's not only um, a regular in a week, in a weekly way, but it's permanent because it, we need our body to be working as a, as a muscle, let's say. So this needs to be done in a permanent way. And the third lesson is that the future sh should be uh, more important than the present and that help us overcome individualism in which we're living in and then finally the um, the complexity logic needs to become part of the way we see reality okay i'm not going to show anything else right now i'm just going to show you these images just for you to see that we have expanded the good be, uh, living for uh, a minimum of 20,000 people. Um, and we always get out of our meetings very happy. You can see it in the pictures. And, um, and well, I missed some slides that I, I didn't have the time, um, but is the complexity logic, the one that is making us evolve. There are, of course, many theoretical frameworks uh, with more than 30 or 40 years of research. And here you can also see when once you receive the presentation here you can have our contacts and our websites i would like to um highlight the one of bitly uh, dash red lasses where you can find all our way all our um, history um and this story has uh, only started and I give the floor for us to continue the dialogue. Thank you so much, Eloisa, for your presentation. It has given us a historical scenario and geographical scenario of all these initiatives that are, are being implemented in Latin America. And you give us the key um, items about these experiences and also the differences because as you said we have so many different currencies and this community community credit as well and within the mexican ones and the argentine ones and the colombians um uh, yesterday i i was with the currency luna that was uh, a dialogue that was so um, kind and nice and with other currencies in Bogota as well. So we know we are together in this, even if we have different experiences. Um, and this also happens with the um, currencies of Brazil. That's why for me, it was important for me that we receive and we listen from the experience of Brazil. Um, for that, we have here the participation of Nelson Inés Fabian Nespolo. Um, and she has also been a, a militant of Solidarity Economy, president of Unibens, Justa Trama, and she's a co-founder of the 
the bank um, she's going to be talking about. She has written uh, books. One of them, those, is Tramando Certezas and Esperanzas, and launching as well the networks of hope as well. Thank you so much, uh, Nelsa, for being here today and for sharing with, our, with us your hope. Thank you very much. I would. Good morning, everyone. Brazil is morning still, and I am very happy and full of emotion because I am in a webinar with the presence of people from Asia, from China. I am very grateful, and I'd like to thank the Global University of China, the good living university from Mexico. Thank you for the invitation. And we are very honored to be part of this great event and share some of our experience of our life together with Eloisa Primavera, with the other participants, Claudia and Annalie. And I will be talking about our Brazil and talk about themes that we are really eager to make changes in Brazil. And this last census done in 2023, we are 203 million of people. In a Brazil, as a country that has the second worst inequality, social inequality, we are behind Qatar. And uh, the 2% uh, of Brazilians has 42% of the wealth, uh, the whole, well, uh, so we have 21 million of people in Brazil that do not have anything to eat and 130 million of people that are in food and safety. So you have a, a country full of inequality and you are not uh, tranquil at all. You have to change the situation. But on the other side, you are facing a moment in Brazil that you are full of hope with a new government after a very difficult moment that you faced in the last six years with the cup and with a fascist uh, government that made the lives of people very difficult. People got uh, poor and poor and uh, with lack of health. Now the government is having the Bolsa Familia, the family income support that you have the minimum income for the people who really I need and you want to finish the hunger you have a popular housing so we are reconstructing Brazil with the public policies and with the struggle of social movements I'd like to talk about the community banks because this is a subject that made me thinking about uh, life transformation and it is doing so. We have 25 years. In Mexico, we have 30 years that we start the first bank. In Brazil, we have 25 years of experience that you have a Palmas Bank in Ceará. But currently, we are having a survey that uh, university mapped 182 community banks. These banks, the majority of them, they work with their own resources. They face difficulties as well, but they have the experience. We have the experience of 90 community banks that have an agreement, a partnership with the municipalities. The banks are always from the communities. However, the municipal governments of uh, the spe specific cities, uh, they can put some resources. So it goes through uh, the banks, the social policies. This is a very important reality that we are living here in Brazil to make uh, the municipalities sensitive about the implementation and uh, becoming more partners of the public policies with the community banks. Eloisa Primavera talked about America. 
that is our icon, iconic city that uh, has a very important impact in the city because everything that you have in social policy goes through Mombukabek. And it really encompasses the populations with a social policy included. And you have other minor municipalities that are starting to implement agreements together with the community banks. We have three ways of working with the community banks. As I can tell you and show you, this is uh, Justo. This is a currency in paper, so you can work the understanding of a trust. And each bank has its own name for the currency. And the many banks made progress to have digital cards. And you are working with the digital accounts. Uh, and you have currency and paper currency, coins, and you unify the community banks. Up to 2022, we had uh, the loan of 100 million of reais for the community banks. Just to see the dimension, every five reais is one euro. So just for you to make the comparison and a dimension in paper and money. So we had 100 million done as loan. And it, they were paid by social policy or you could have the income, support uh, for food, uh, emergency programs, emergency programs and credits. 100 million, you had the credit policy developed by many community banks. We have 27, 704 establishments that accept commercial currency. This is up to 2022. So you have the social policy and loans, you have 4 billion in social currency. In other words, we have a uh, 90 million 426 million 36 movements made. We are in 24 states in Brazil. These states that we have 203 million of people. You have 27 states, and you are in 24 states. We have very important impacts, and I would like to share a bit more specifically about a community bank that is a small one where I am, that is Justa Toca Bank, that started in 2015. And you have the Justa currency. These are the social currencies in Brazil. They correspond to the same currency as well. And also, Realize it's very important for us because it's a bank that we say a fair trade that's a place in which there are 4,000 people living there close to the city, capital city of Porto Alegre, is the capital city of the state of Rio Grande do Sul. In 2016, we had violence violence of deaths, also drug dealing. Lots of people that were killed because of drug dealing. And, and everybody felt threatened. So we started this community bank called Fair Trade. And we had a good time in Brazil. Uh, Juma, our former president, she was impeached. And so there were difficulties in trusting everything that we did. That's the reason why it was very important to have this frequent currency. So understand, little by little, people understand the 
grocery stores, grocery drug stores, they started accepting the social currency and they gave discounts from five to 10% in using this model. The greatest understanding of the social currency is that the money will remain in the territory. So that territory can be developed. And then after that, we start to trust more people. And today, there is a place in which we don't have drug trafficking anymore. There were as it was before, and lots of people. And also problems in the community as well. And this kind of thing doesn't happen. And so we we are going to check this communitarian banks and see how it's going to change now. And now also we have lower uh, possibilities. So people can have credits to have to start their businesses. This bank has the international support in a very special manner in different organizations, extra from Italy, also another organization from China. They have this model and we see an opportunity to be able this year to work in Cordoba, Valencia, and also in Spain, in other places of the world to show what we are doing so we can create other manners of working this finance solidarian model or system as it has been very important to work also with other countries such as in, in Spain. There is a school for social economics and solidarity economy as well. We are in a very small uh, neighborhood in the city of Porto Alegre, and we are struggling to have this struggle changed and reach more people, having the social currency to achieve greater possibilities. Co communitarian bank in the period of pandemics, there was a population that has been put aside by the politicians. The Brazilian government at that time did not worry about the people, the state government, city government. So it was difficult to have support from the political sphere. So more and more, the dwellers of the cities, they were having difficulties. We started also delivering masks and soaps so people could take care of themselves during the pandemics. And today we help them so people don't starve. This communitarian bank, it has that we could work different figures and understand the importance of these banks and show how these banks, they can transform people's lives, how these banks can help to transform the financial system. I'd like to draw your attention that more than that, a communitarian bank creates a relation of trust amongst people in the different territories and poor neighborhoods. That's something very deep to build the world that we all dream about. It says that we are equal. There is a different manner to show what is worth and what is not worth, the value of different things and value of people. We have to understand who controls the social, th this currency. In the case of social uh, currency, who controls the currency is the community, not the banks, not the uh, financial system. We are working with different countries. And I dream that we have now in Brazil, the greatest struggle to create a financial system that places these social currencies as a priority on top of everything so we can build social policies and distribute the income 
what is very necessary currently in Brazil. This network of banks will be important You have one or two more minutes to close. So I have written this book as well. That is a, uh, uh, what I call this book is a hope uh, of fabric, the, the fabric of hope or meaning the tissue of the society being built together in how we can transform the lives of people and above all transform the people's awareness. Everything that went through in Brazil, we deeply believe that it's necessary to transform the consciousness of people so they can have a critical analysis, what happens in the world, what happens in your country and also in your territory territory so that are not taken by the capitalist system and they end up going through so many problems, so many pain as we went through in Brazil in the last six years. But we believe that it's possible to create a new financial system and above all the community experiences, they can convey different messages with different initiatives transforming the people's life and also transforming the territories. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nelsa, for giving us the context of what is happening in Brazil. And precisely, Brazil is one of the countries that has inspired us the most in this need of creating a financial system, as you have well explained, a popular a uh, social financial system, a financial system that is truly social. Well, we have several comments from comrades who are following the session. Um, we There are greetings from Altagracia, Argentina, Nati and Jody. There are also greetings from the uh, Consol uh, Barter. Uh, Welcome, comrades. Also from the World Social Forum, we have someone, Pierre George, and they're saying that these experiences are also very much welcome in the World Social Forum. I see several friends who are connected, different currency experiences. A comrade from Mexico, welcome to you too. Uh, now we will continue with the panel then. Now we're gonna to go to Mexico. We're going to talk a bit more about other types of experiences that are the time banks. We have always considered them brothers and sisters of the community uh, currencies. And we have reflected a lot on how to link the time banks and community currencies. We have always been joined but we need to consolidate this union. And that's why we thought it was very important to have Jalila Lumera with us here today because she is a professor. She studied a master's in social anthropology, anthropology and education. She is founder of a human, develop a human development and solidary economy cooperative. And she's a member of a cooperative network in Mexico. She is also a founder of the of the Qualcan Time Bank, and she has specialized in human development, education, public service, social organization, public policy, and so solidary economy. You have the floor. Thank you. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good night to all of you. To everybody who is with us here today. There are people and I and very many people here that I know very well I send them all greetings and hugs Sylvia and we have been together recently and I also want to thank uh, Professor Kim Chi and Jede and Claudia Alvarez from the Global University for Sustainability in China and also the Good Living University. Thank you very much for making this meeting possible in different time zones. 
and making possible the fact that we can share all our experiences. In the case of Mexico, in the case of the city of Mexico specifically, we started with the pandemic, just as Eloisa has also mentioned, she mentioned the importance that this situation had on a global level so as to develop and move forward with different ways of doing things. I think that we, when we have the opportunities, and this is an advantage of these types of networks, there are opportunities to try to do things better, and that's what we are trying to do. And I say that we are children of the pandemic because in February 2020, we were invited as a human development cooperative to do a workshop on a solidarity or social economy. And when we put together the program, we thought about adding uh, something about the tools of social and solidarity economy. And so we put time banks, community currencies, multi-barter network, among others, because there are formal and informal instances. And that's where our story started. So we have been uh, around for about two years and a half, three years and a half, I'm sorry. We, of course, we were working in person before the pandemic. We were doing courses and workshops and suddenly the pandemic began and we started working online. So, you know, of course, all the unemployment issues came up, closing of shops. There were many people who were left unemployed. And so it was the opportunity to say, okay, everything continues. All these tools that we have from the solidarity economy, but we need to see if in practice, beyond theory, things work. So we launched the challenge. Our comrades accepted the challenge. And that is how the story of Qualcan begins the time bank, Qualcan time bank. On the way during research and on this path, we, we have been looking for models, we have been looking for ways to update this idea of the time backs. And so we found Julio Hisberg. And I, I'm very happy to see him here today because he has been a key peace in the development of this bank. They led us by the hand practically. They explained to us how we could actually um, if make effective this exercise in a very generous way. And one thing took us to the other. It was actually Julio Kriesberg who put us in contact to, with Claudia Caballero when we stopped doing an exchange of services and we started doing only exchange of services, and we've started doing exchange of products. So in the last three years, we have systematized the experience. We have been, oh, wait a second, I'm going to, I want to put up my presentation. The issue of social and solidarity economy is very broad. And I, I have come across different notions, different ways of perceiving it and conceiving it as a starting point to approach other topics such as current, uh, community currencies, time banks, etc., And we find that there are philosophical, historical, and technical points of view. But I don't want to take our attention away too far away from, a, from this because we are now trying to publish this material. In the end, it is a systemized experience of this Qualcan model. So we're going to leave it there. So it can be disseminated. So we are in the, in the midst of publishing it. We are going to publish our experience so that we can disseminate all of these different exercises. So for people who are present here at the forum, let's talk about what a time bank is. It is a tool of solidarity and social economy that allows us to deposit time of what we know how, regarding what we know how to do. So if we have a profession, an art, a craft, a talent, a skill, everything is useful. The important thing about time banks 
is that we can show, demonstrate that we can solve our daily needs without money in the middle. I think this is the most relevant thing of an exercise like this, where there is no money circulating, where there is a lot of unemployment, but not because of this, we're going to remain with our arms crossed. We need to move forward and make a living. So as Qualcan, what we did was we systematized the ABC, the step-by-step -step of how we can conform a time bank. And we summarized this in 12 steps, 12 points. The generation of the um, managing group or the group that is going to actually carry this out. This is very important. It has to do with organizing a group of people in relation to different topics. There are people who refer to environmental or motherhood issues or sports issues. In this case of Qualcan, this comes up as a need to face the pandemic crisis. So a group of people got together to organize each other and start with this project. The second step, which I believe is very, very important, is that we have training exercise or formation exercise. So in this case, we believe that before starting any thing like this, any venture like this, we need to take a course on social and solidary economy, a course on principles and values and strategic planning as well. And once we have these three experiences of courses, we need to go to define our objective. It is very important to define why we want a time back. What is our mission, our vision, our principles and values, our general guidelines, our name, our logo. We need to give this venture a personality. And the next step, step four, has to do with defining a structure. In this case, we defined a circular structure as a collective guidance. Once we have the structure defined, okay, how are we going to function? That would be point five. Def and the number six would be defining the documents that we need to function. Uh, we, we're talking about a set of rules, a charter for commitment, a credential, uh, data protection, a, a member catalog, etc. The next Step number seven would be calendarizing or, or setting a calendar for the general assemblies of the members and also of the management group. The number eight would be defining moderators and to put together the assembly minutes, right? So we resolved to meet every Saturday at 10 a.m. And we did this for two years and a half, each Saturday uninterrupted. And this enabled us to achieve the consolidation of our time bank. We also need a recording system, which is point nine. Originally, this was manual, and then we moved into digital system. And then number 10 would be an annual plan according to each commission, where we mapped out the different needs. Number 11 is presenting a calendar for the fairs, uh, for exchanging products and services, be it online or in person. And finally, number 12 would be a work report. These are the 12 points that we believe are the most important to uh, carry out and achieve and reproduce these experiences. As Nelsa was saying, it's very important to reproduce them so we can grow and we can become stronger because an isolated experience doesn't do, can only do so much. So these meetings like this one and the invitations to different events, for example, from the Autonomous University of Mexico, the UNAM, the Polytechnical University, the Secretariat of Culture, all of these different invitations have been very important so as to make our project more known or well known. So we developed, as you can see here, each one of these 12 points, the 12 points that we mentioned before, they are developed with the purpose of editing the material so that it can be useful for the different spaces where we get invitations from 
and uh, where people want to carry out maybe banks of their own. And I don't know if you know, here, for example, we have this material. I don't know if you can see it. This is a manual or a, or a guidebook that is called In Order to Live Free of Debt and Free of Money. This is a material that Claudia shared with us. And with the same publishing company, we have talked to them so that our material has the same format as a follow-up of an exercise uh, you know, with different tools and between different organizations. So the purpose of this material that I am presenting today, which is like a, the opening day for this presentation of this material, this is where we are going to develop in a very specific way all the different points, the 12 points. Here you can see the creation of the management group, the courses, why these courses for formation or training, why they are important, also the definition of the objective that I mentioned before, which is so important, the general guidelines. Um, I would like to stop here for a second because we believe that mm, not participating in the public and private sector and the political parties is what will enable us to actually move forward. Because usually, and I don't know if it's the same in other countries, but at least in Mexico, we there is a, a common use of capitalizing these types of experiences for the benefit of certain groups. So we believe that the time banks should be distant from political parties, religions, and government organizations, but we also adopt a sociocratic organization because we need to reach consensus with certain organizations. We define collective guidance. We define also that the time bank is based on trust, on friendship, on solidarity, on cooperation, on care, and on love. We define ourselves as inclusive, and we say that we need to adopt an economy, a gift economy and a care economy. We also stand for autonomy. Number four, you have two or three more minutes to finish, Yali. And point four was the structure. We want it to be circular with a collective guidance. And then functioning, which was point five. I want to show you very quickly how we started the exchange of services through uh, through uh, 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 this paper, which is says valid for an hour. And once we started to exchange services, we also worked with the Michoacan community so as to create our own currency, our own community currency. So with this currency, we also exchange not only uh, services, which we did with the previous paper, but also products. And now we define each one of the activities. I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to go very quickly through this. The way in which we detail the functioning, the basic documents, etc., in a way that people can count on basic material so that they don't have to struggle with everything that we struggled with. And so what I want to show you are the assemblies when we were in, when we were in lockdown and we did the assemblies online. And these meetings led us to have products. We started to be prosumers with the concept of the Mishuka comrades, after, this is after lockdown. This is our first meeting. Here we had some multi-barter experiences with our currency, and we started to have meetings with other collectives. Here we went to the Ajusco with the Michuca comrades. We also went to Tosepan with the comrades from the Jarillas culture house. We also went to Valle de Bravo with other comrades from Mexico. And then we went to celebrate the 13 years of the Michuca Multitrueque, a multi-barter organization. And this is the 10th anniversary of, the, of a social currency. And so we have been participating in different activities. And I think that I can stop here 
but I do want to stress that we are very much strengthened by, per, by pertaining to the Ibero-American Association of Time Banks, because this is an international organization. Uh, and we have people like Eloisa Primavera, Julio Crisberg, who have accompanied us in a very solidary and generous way in this experience. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Yali, for sharing this experience of the Time Bank. And there are a few comments in the chat. If I would like to greet everybody who's who are with us today, some people who had spoken, Beatriz Manciel from the Economy Observatory, from the University of Lomas de Zamora in Buenos Aires. We have the comrades from Querétaro as well. And it would, I would like them to share, to, to participate with any comment if you'd like. And since Yali, you were mentioning about the association of time banks, I would like if Julio would like to participate as well. So we're going to open the floor for us to be able to, to talk, to have a dialogue. And if you have any questions, you could either write it in the chat, a question or a comment, and I'm going to read it out loud. Or if you would like to make a question or a comment, we can have a couple of um, minutes to have some questions and then we're going to have a closing with our three um, panelists in, on the last minutes of the um, session. So I don't know if Julio or Silvia or only the, uh, only of the uh, comrades of Truque and Consol would like to make any comment or a question that would be really enriching if you could share what you are doing in your areas. If you'd like, you can raise your hand or just open your microphone to be able to participate. Okay, we have Julio. Julio, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. But I'd like to greet you from Madrid, Spain. We are at an electoral moment. The country, well, it's, um, it's uh, with different circumstances that is, are influencing in the economy and the people. But there we are. I'd like to thank you for um, all you've said. It's been so interesting. And I want to thank the organization because sometimes the language barrier, it's, it's, it's very important and uh, it's been very well solved within this conference. We take you as a model because we're always um, having, creating bridges uh, among all the time banks that are around the world. And we always see that the language is like a barrier that separates us. But the organization of this Chinese um, university has seemed to me so enriching and uh, beyond the sharing of all this knowledge. So I just wanted to say this, to thank you, the university, for this proposal and to thank you all you that I consider my really good friends, very personal friends for me. And, and let's continue building these bridges uh, because I think it's the most important thing. This is a global movement. It's not only the bank, the time banks, but also the currencies, the social currencies. And I think this is a movement of hope. And I'd also like to greet Nelsa with her book and all that important movement um, of communitary banks in Brazil. We get out of here with hope and uh, and also you're all women and this is so important. I don't know if I'm the only man here, but I'm really happy to hear all these powerful women speaking. This is all I wanted to say. Thank you so much. Thank you, Julio. Well, um, it, I would like to use your participation to add that, of course, the global university is teaching us so much and how we place ourselves in a network, in a global network. So thank you so much now to all the professors 
And of course, we have the space open in order to link the global university with other um, groups, but also for this topic to be better worked or further looked into with them in the future. I don't know if there's any other participant who would like to speak. Silvia from Querétaro. Um, and then after that, Claudia Alvarez. Please, Silvia, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much for creating these fabrics, these life fabrics that uh, give us hope, as our comrade was saying. And my beyond thinking, I want to mention something about what uh, Loisa said. Uh, it's important now, not only activism right now, but also to look into those beings are full of magic and uh, with so much wisdom that make that appropriate all these concepts all these other different ways of lives and i am talking about the kids the children and the young people so i want to congratulate and support the fact that all of us keep on creating the fabric, not only within adults, but also placing our, um, our look and our hope in our young people that are creating this new um, social economy networks and to invite them to keep on creating this hopeful um, way of life because they create different spaces from their innocence, from their sharing more than competing. So the invitation is for us to call on all the different places of this beautiful world to place our gaze, our look in the young people, in the children, people that have, in the older people as well, and people with different capacities, or um, and to take them into account for our spaces and our uh, courses. Thank you, Silvia. Sylvia, if you could place in the chat all the videos and also to say, to mention that there's a book that has been done by Sylvia and the people from the network of the uh, transition, which is a book where they share how this consumer issue works in a um, Com a co uh, community and economy. And I'm really happy because she was here uh, a couple of weeks ago celebrating the anniversary of a currency that is, is, was created for kids. So there are a lot of materials for those people who are interested in developing this kind of activities with children can contact you, Sylvia. Okay, so we had Claudia and Elena on, on the line to speak. So I give the floor to Claudia Alvarez, please. And then Elena, I'd like to congratulate uh, you all for this activity and to say that the exchange is always enriching and, uh, and there are some uh, uh, perspectives I'd like to highlight. And one is the, the thing about the youth, about the exchange of ex ex experiences and the challenges and difficulties we go through. So to make those experiences a tool for transformation in certain places. So sometimes with short videos, I have a, I have a video by Claudia of 20 minutes that shows how she developed a specific experience. I think we're lacking some material to tell and promote uh, more our experiences. And then about specific experiences, uh, about beyond the, the network that doesn't, uh, wasn't born as a currency, uh, but it gave us an, a, a, a scenario of the different currencies. We have so many people uh, that are 
involved and to tell you that you are all welcome. We want to exchange as physical people to get together and to get together to our with our communities as well. And also that we have a, a barter uh, relation that it's an experience we want to systematize and we want to share. And, and this must call our reflection how after two years of exchanging and of thinking, we were able to integrate the youth and the teenagers um, after 12 years old, on Saturday, we had the first day where uh, we participated actively with this, uh, with three new participants from uh, this age group. Uh, but it should call us our attention to solve the time that we spend to solve things that are from daily life that should be very, very quick and easy to solve. Okay, we have a question from the Chinese audience. If you can please we explain a bit more how the time bank works. Uh, so we will ask Jali or Julio if they could make a brief comment on how these time banks uh, work. Part of the material we prepared is precisely about how the time bank works. So maybe I could go back to the presentation so that we can explain better how it works. So let's see, here it is. Just to uh, be able to show you better. We had talked about item number one and the definition, the structure, and, and here we have the, the functioning. We use um, a paper that is that helps you have an account of the transfer between the parts in the exchange of products. We use the uh, community currency. Well, this is the material that works as a paper, let's say, that uh, help us uh, do the exchange where you have the name of the provider, of the user, etc. And here we have an assessment as well to see if the service was good or bad or regular. So how it works, well, is to exchange in a multilateral way, that is to say, People uh, A can transfer with B and with C and etc. It's not a one-to-one -one exchange, it's a bilateral exchange. So we can access to different services. Um, these um, help us uh, solve the needs of the daily life. So first I, I I check on the catalog that exists with all the products and the services. And I, if there's a contact with the, the person, I can establish the date and so on for the exchange. But we need to register all this. And this is done in the time bank. So we classify the information of the services following different um, characteristics, for example, the profession uh, or the occupation and the level if it's basic or intermediate or advanced in which territory it is based, if it's in neighborhoods or in communities or colonies, etc., and whether if it's digital or um, uh, face to face. So that allows us to have the information a little bit more organized than we have the accountability. And there's a team that dynamizes this. So when there's not a lot of activity, this group uh, uh, as starts working to make it more lively. So we have uh, a, a permanent training all the time. So with this this material is going to be edited, edited, and we're going to share it and disseminate it. Thank you, Jali. We are receiving greetings from Moneda Park, from Cordoba Capital, 
we also have greetings from Rose, Rosario, the Nodo, Nodo Par. Uh, we have greetings from Mexico. Uh, um, and uh, well, Eloisa also shared with us a lot of links and uh, in a book that is called A Million of Calm Revolutions and the manual that uh, our comrades did as well. And also there's a very interesting book on how to use uh, community currency, but from a, the children's perspective. Thank you, Yali, for sharing how the time bank works. And if there's no other question, maybe we can do a closing um, or is there anybody else who has raised their hands? Thank you very much, Alejandra. We also have her greetings from Mexico, our dear friend. We have also been linked via the Global University. There is a question for Eloisa. It's from Xiyin Luo. Um, could you please talk more about the government support and the control of the community currency movement. So I specifically referred to two cases. The Argentine case, that was a very interesting case because it took place during a year of transition in Argentina, which was the year 2001. In this year, and I can say this because I was the coordinator of the, of the thesis of this of this student in a public administration masters. He presented with a senator from Mendoza from the, from the Peronist party. He presented an evaluation of the different barter clubs in Argentina because there were so many currencies in paper that was very easy to falsify them. So there was, there, there were some distortions that started where some things cost uh, five in one place and another place 50 and another place 500. What we saw there is that there was too much paper as it is happening right now as well. But what did this, what did the Congress do at that time? It presented, and that's what my student did his thesis about. It presented a project and very suddenly uh, other four projects appear. He presented a project in the Senate and other four ones appeared immediately. So remember that this is the year 2001 um, and so the government wanted to elegantly protect people from falsification, but we are talking about the year 2001, so it is very difficult to, to think about at that time how it could be controlled so there were no deviations. Let's suppose that that was their intention at that time. Why? Because the time of suspicion had already passed that this was a bad subversive movement. Now we understood it as a good subversive movement because we had many declarations uh, uh, of this movement as social interest movements. Uh, and so the government attempted to do a control but didn't achieve it. Why? Because in December 2001, everything exploded. Politics, finances, and economy exploded at that moment. So the movement, it fell through. It just it just because falsifications took place. Now we are in a different situation because the currencies that exist in Argentina are currencies that run on a blockchain. There are many systems that can control the non-corruptibility of the system. And so the government uh, has not meddled with this yet. However, in Brazil, because very prematurely, and I think it was in the year 2006, there was an interest from the central bank there. There are publications there. There is a doctoral thesis from Marusa Vasconcelos about this, showing that local currencies contributed to social policy. So the government had a different, adopted a different attitude. And the Banco Palma was intelligent and sensitive enough to start doing something different, to benefit from the fintech laws, the fintech laws, the finances and microcredits laws and technologies, so that uh, this was transparent. So there are two different movements. The Argentine movement, which is the example of a failure. Currently, there is nothing replacing that except an alleged 
an alleged attitude of not calling the currency a currency, etc., which is quite debatable, because if it's a payment instrument, it is a currency. It's a currency with no bank interest, so it's a different currency. But in order to close what I mentioned about Brazil, Brazil is automatically controlled what is happening there, because today Brazil has social currencies of its 150 banks, and that are backed by the official currency. So they are officially controlled. Is this clear? They, it's like many European currencies in France, in Spain, they are backed by the official currency. So I wanted to insist again on what is the best currency. There is no currency that is better than the other. They reach different audiences, but to me, to me that I am from the generation of the 60s, I have lived the experiences of attempting to change the system, uh, turning it around, experience of Cuba and Sandinist, Nicaragua, uh, all of them that are questioned today for different reasons. To me, it's the the currency that doesn't have a backup. Why? Because they are based on people's trust. And this is why they can escape the control of the state and of the banks. Specifically, and this is for Nelsa, this is for Nelsa specifically, Nelsa, if you can watch me here, this is for you because they can be complemented, they can be supplemented. When have we not used more than a system of exchange? There can be a social local community currency that is controlled and another one that is controlled by ourselves. It is not uncontrolled. It is a much more legitimate form of control. It is control of the people who use it. So this can be, we can broaden this, we can speak more about this. Uh, a comrade who asked the question, I put my telephone number there, you can write to me, we can talk about this in more depth. But I would say that this is the way. It's about supplementing, not only using one, why not use two or more? Thank you, Eloisa. This topic, uh, this issue of currencies and exchange systems, we are so passionate about it. There is so much to comment on this and there is so much to say. And we know that we face many, many challenges. This is precisely one that Eloisa mentioned, thanks to the question, about how we can carry out this part with the government. And the other one, is that sometimes, and we know this, those of us who use community currencies in our daily lives, we know that one only is not enough. We need to use more. We need to prioritize, of course, the local aspects, but also we need to develop regional and global strategies. There is a lot to comment in, in this sense. Silvia brings us back to the essence where our exchange forms should take into account education and environmental care, permaculture, thankful with ecosystem services offered by our home, the earth. I believe that in the end, this is the objective of our solidary economy practices, and it should be the objective of the time banks as well and the different currencies. And there is a question about time banks from Morelia, they talk it talks about a specific case jali mentioned the qualcan time bank that she founded but the question here is if the concept of bank doesn't it refer to the capitalist economic traditional system wouldn't it be better to think about a different name like for example time house or time home this is a suggestion and jali i don't know if you maybe in this last part you you want to maybe comment on this question or comment? Should I go now? Yes. These are two questions, actually. One of them says that uh, how can an exchange be done? Uh, give us an example of an exchange of services. The first experience that we had, a comrade is an expert in urban gardens, urban gardens. So I signed up to take her course, her workshop. She was in Guanajuato. And so through an online course, she taught us all this information to grow a community garden. After this course, for example, we exchanged with her other types of knowledge. 
she chose specifically how to, for example, create hygiene products. So in this exchange, we achieved a very productive result where many of us started to produce uh, different uh, vegetables. We have products not only for our personal consumption, and that's where the concept of prosumer is very important, but we also had products to exchange. And so our exchanges were not only about exchanging services, but they now were about exchanging products. That's why it is important to think about these different tools together, hand in hand. Another very beautiful example is that at some point, I had a problem with one of my teeth, one, a tooth. And so I told the doctor and the doctor said, okay, what do I get out of this exchange? And I said, okay, this is our catalog of services. And so he says, I'm interested in that one for my children. And so he incorporated into the network and we started doing this exchange that I need to use money. Why call it a bank and not a home or a house? Well, as Eloisa says, these are very controversial subjects. We, should we call it a currency or not? Should we call it a bank or not? That is a joint construction, a collective construction. The important thing here is that we stop using conventional money. That's the main point. Okay. Thank you very much, Jali. Thank you very much also for the comments. Also from Estela, Ashid, and from Kurdistan, she says that everything was brilliant and very inspiring, and that she hopes to see us all in the UK. She's from the Peace and Kurdistan organization, I'm sorry. So now we're going to do the closing of this session. We would like to ask our three panelists to give us some final closing words, hopeful and inspiring words, but thinking also about the next steps, maybe at a deeper level, an essential level of our experience, or at the practical level. We are always thinking about practical aspects of things. So would you like to start in the in the order that we began our session or should we do it the other way around maybe jali then can start then nelsa and then eloisa is that okay with you you choose you choose okay okay just to do it uh, more balanced let's do that jali then please start with the closing words about two or three minutes for our your last participation I want to go back to this idea of a proposal of generating dissemination materials about all these experiences. I think it's very, very important to start to work with publishing companies, cooperative and sister publishing companies that are within this system of mutual help, mutual aid, where we can print Print these different exercises and experiences. It is very important to disseminate them. And I have seen this because in Mexico now, we have been invited from different places, from different institutions. It has what has enabled me to systematize experience and to generate a material that might be useful as a guide or as an accompaniment to reproduce these experiences. So I want to stress the importance of generating this dissemination materials. Also, in relation to what Sylvia just mentioned, I completely agree that the foundation of all of this change is education. I am completely, uh, I relate completely to that about generating an educational system that is on the margins of the public and the private sectors. It has to be a different concept of education, as one that is in agreements, in agreement, in accordance with the strength, social strengthening. In this sense, we have started to work also on material that refers to this um, educational model based that is like the spine of a cooperative production and not competitive production production. We are working on this. And the fact that we are in this space together, where there are two universities that can make possible this discussion in events like this, I think this is crucial. And we need to 
work on this, on having other meetings where we can uh, disseminate our points of view to enrich this proposal. It's about education within the social sector. I think that that is the way forward. That is the path forward. Thank you. Thank you, Jali. Nelsa, please. I would like to have some comments to share with you. Yeah, what uh, Julio said, it is a construction. You have a female face. This is very strong. Then you see the presence of a women in the community max to be in the leadership. It's not uh, by any chance. Uh, it was not uh, only a coincidence. Uh, the women have this attitude to bring the new, when you have this new construction of a social points and all this diversity, women are there in a very hot spot manner. And you have a special commitment with the children and the youth, young people, because they have a very strong presence in the community backs. We have the event of 25 years of a Palmas Bank. This is the expression of the women. The Marika Bank, you have the youth present. And the whole process is led by youth. So you have the mix of women and youth all together, both of them. So we have to have this glance in this the construction of knowledge for children. It's wonderful when you have the ferry and people have to exchange uh, the currency, the official currency to social currency. And the, the children are fascinated by the coins, I mean, the currency, and the, this engagement goes to other levels of uh, understanding. It's very important. And I was thinking about uh, this methodology. What do you need from these different methodology in different countries? You want to change this planet for good. And you want to do this. And all the initiatives are important. They are important and they need to be empowered. And they have to have this moment of encounter. And the most important aspect is to change the consciousness of the people. And for that reason, you have to have the permanent understanding, knowledge of methodology. And it's difficult to make people encountered by that because this bank make people included. I'm thinking about the women that have the services for social programs and they had the capacity building to do a handcraft work and they have their own income due to that. Uh, this is really important in terms of freedom in all senses. And uh, it's a uh, deliverance uh, and the protagonism of women. We are the majority in this planet and we are important in the process of, of transformation. The social currency is very important. You have to read more, you have to produce more, you have to encant more. So it will reproduce more and more in the globe and you have uh, what important feedbacks, and this is really transformative. Thank you for the opportunity to be with you in this Sunday to share and exchange this energy and believe that more and more you can transform the globe into a better world, a better planet. We are about to finish this session with Eloisa's um, words. Okay, it's very difficult to, to have the almost last words. I had a friend that used to say, this is my previous to last drink. And every time somebody says something uh, beyond the public and the private, I don't want to be excluded from the state. I am the state when I pay taxes, I am the state. I am private when I do my own entrepreneurship, which uh, I use my time and uh, money. So um, there are many ideas to be discussed. And, uh, and I, all, I now remembered that uh, uh, I'm, I 
commit with Kim T to give her more material about this because there's something central in what we are saying. Uh, Elena said that I'm now in Uruguay and in Uruguay I involved in a project with Cre with creating in the region of Colonia, very near to Buenos Aires, a, a, re a center of reference. And uh, here we have the fables that are so famous. This is an example uh, that is called the plastic in my stomach. And this is for children in schools. This is done in a paper that didn't use any trees. It used only the 10% of water to be produced. This is a clear example of getting out of encounters and the debates and the initiatives that everybody knows um, that I, which are the, the currency, the social currencies, but always, it was always a struggle for inequalities. The currencies were just one way that I found to make this vision of inequality uh, more, more efficient. And I found many other things uh, around uh, throughout the, the way. And I always sustained the currencies because I feel that it's an instrument with whom it's practiced. Without going to university, you can incorporate this practice that there is another way to build trust and to build community. But now in Uruguay, I'm working on the building of a center of econ uh, reference of a South economy. And Tina has a possibility because because two years ago, the professor received a prize in China um, because he has a lot of publications that are used in the kindergarten in China. So Kim Ti, I'm going to show you all this material. And I only now realized when I, I saw this book, uh, this book that is called Plastic in My Stomach. This is only an example on how we can include not only kids, but to include kids in order to include the parents and the grandparents in their responsibility to build another social order because markets are the fundamental activity of social life. And of course, it's, it includes kids. We have a lot of programs here. That's what I say. There's more than one million of uh, calm uh, revol revolutions. The zero, zero um, garbage is one of the principles we need to practice with the kids. But kids have uh, parents and have uh, siblings and so on. So I commit to send you through um, Kim T, through Kim T Lau, I'm going to send you all this data so that you can have it as a specific example. And I like the idea of thinking about materials that are both short and long material, because this is a mission mission of the university to create their own framework you know, uh, and that think that money is only one thing. But no, money is what we want to make uh, of it. In 2002, the kids from Banco Palma decided that there's one currency that comes from the god and then currency that comes from devil that would be the, the real in Brazil. So as I'm saying, working with kids is fundamental. Very soon in where I live, there will be a series of experiences to show in the practice how we can create economy without uh, appropriating the planet to understand what kind of permaculture and what kind of production and proteins with local resources, how we can create local markets. Um, a few days ago in Argentina, uh, there was something like these, um, they were joking with the minister of Cuba, who was saying that was going to um, create um, things in their own houses for them to, to eat. In Argentina, there were joking they were making fun of this minister instead of applauding because um we we don't believe that we can live in a different way but on the another hand 
to talk about visibility and the production of short material, because long materials will be for universities that have the responsibility of training new academics, new scholars, because our theor theory now is dead. It's completely uh, antique. We need, it need to be replaced, but uh, we need to throw all that theory again and start over, okay? But I would like to say that um, because Elena is here and makes me remember that we are part of a project that we recently started. Elena is a specialist and she's a fan of the production of short material. And we start, we, we started a competition, let's say we are part of a competition that's called Those Women 2023 that are generous. It's a prize that is very rare because it's a prize we don't want to win, but we want to participate in it. It's a competition in which we don't want, we don't care about winning, although we were already pre-selected in the, uh, between the first seven, but it's a project in which we're going to show social projects that are being done. And the most important is for us is to show and to uh, uh, sorry, uh, I think to, to be shown as women, as innovators. And then the last question that I answered, that I want to answer is why, why do we um, uh, not offer ourselves as the way we would like? Because if we ask ourselves, are we fine where we are at now? Well, maybe there are some other comrades that are more, that are younger uh, than me, but I'm in a hurry because I'm in the last part of the opera. So I need to finish everything now with the symphony that I have now in my last, my long term would be five years for me. Why? Because, because we don't share in the practice, we, we share the ideas and the meetings and uh, people go back to their houses and do their same, the same thing. So I've been looking into why is it so difficult to expand our, our uh, action ratio. And I found the phrase uh, that for me is very inspiring by Nelson Mandela, that you know that it was someone who spent many years in prison and had a lot of time to create good ideas. And he said, that thing we fear, what we fear is not our darkness and our importance. Importance is our light, what we fear, and our power is what we fear. Because if we transform our lives from ourselves, there's nothing we couldn't do. And that is completed by another phrase that I like very much by a noble, a peace novel, um, who said, each day we can choose to wake up on the channel of hope or on the channel of desperation. The channel of hope is linked to responsibility. And responsibility is crucial. And I get, I become a critic of myself. So I can start the day with a scarcity paradigm or abundance paradigm. So this is a reflection I wanted to leave behind. Let's not be afraid of our own light with a, um, with my comrade, I we decided to participate on this prize of the generous prize. We had to redefine what is philanthropy because we didn't like that word. But in order to participate on this challenge and this competition, we redefined the word, we participated and we won the first uh, stage. Um, we don't think we are better. Uh, we just wanted to participate. Or, we are going to move forward in the task of creating visibility of ourselves and to visibilize for the world the role of women.
on this change that is, uh, and this role of the women that is in the collective building that is not seen. Thank you, Eloisa, thank you. Okay, just to bring about the internal light of each of us, this experience has been amazing to have such dear friends, to be able to link between different continents and to be able to hear ourselves. These initiatives of creating thought coming from our practices, our new thoughts uh, that are committed with social movements. I would like to thank Kim Tian Jade that for more than 10 years when they started with the idea of the global university, they call many of our comrades in Mexico, of course, Luis uh, Lopez to participate on the global university. And I think this is a shared path. And we know we need to have food sovereignty. We need to place, to have emphasis on the financial sovereignty, but also on education sovereignty. That is to say how we get back all the possibilities of creating knowledge or to share knowledge. Um, in this way, we are linked with the University of Good Living and the University of the Land. And our a great comrade from Mexico died recently, Gustavo Esteva, who was a founder of the University of the Land, um, which created these alternative ways of education. So with, uh, within all these universities, we'll try to keep on keeping contact to create new ways of living. So from myself, I just want to thank everybody who was here today, listening and participating and the panelists and the co-organization with the Global University and the University of the Good Be Be Living. I don't know if Jade or uh, Kim Ti, you'd like to express any final remarks. You just let me know. So uh, I'm so pleased uh, to be seeing all our friends. Uh, in the past, well, for about 20 years, uh, we had come in person to Mexico, to Argentina, to learn from you, to learn from your experiences. So tonight uh, we had very short time, uh, but then it's so good to hear from you. With it's not just the words that are so they were so inspiring. It's your spirit, uh, your smiles, your your the the ways you show hope. So I hope that um well uh, we didn't need to have a. Eloisa to be to speaking so quickly, we could uh, arrange more uh, opportunities for you to share the experiences, because I think uh, for many people uh, among the Chinese audience, maybe many of these experiences are very uh, uh, unfamiliar. So then they were they were wanting to know how it works, how a member works. But I think uh, we don't do not have the time today to give go into all these details. But congratulations to all of you who have uh, been persisting in your efforts for twenty five years, for thirty years, and I'm sure that um, these experiences are not just about using a local locally made piece of paper. It's not just about local currency, but it is a way we are trying to counter all the failures of the system, all the failures of the the um the system about the, the 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 main currencies, and so these are all the efforts for self sufficiency for for the circulation of the local economies. So I think there is a much food for thought after your presentations. And I hope uh, we could be also receiving more materials from you and we will be uploading them onto the Global University website. So we can have a special column about the solidarity economy and community currencies and to introduce uh, to each other about uh, the different experiences. Thank you again and thank you so much. Mm -hmm.